Abbiamo in linea ora il nostro ospite regolare, Leo D'Angelo Fischer, eh, opinionista con cui parliamo di eventi um, rilevanti del momento. Uh, good afternoon, Leo. Thanks for taking this call from uh, Radio Italia 1 Adelaide. Not at all, Antonio. Good to be with you. Now, I guess well, there are several important items in current affairs that we could discuss, but maybe we can focus today being Thursday, the 19th of November, on the publication of the reports on apparent war crimes committed by Australian soldiers in Afghanistan. Let's have a, a big overview of this, this case, then we'll go into some more detail. Okay. Uh, well, for the past few days, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who has had the report, um, has sought to prepare the Australian people for the seriousness of the findings of, of the report. And uh, I think uh, in retrospect, that, that was well justified. Um, the report was conducted by Major uh, General Paul Berriton, okay. uh, a New South Wales Justice, um, and uh, an Assistant Inspector General of the Australian Defence Forces. The inquiry began uh, partly in response to information that had been received from uh, Australian soldiers who had served in Afghanistan and partly as a result of uh, media uh, exposés uh, made on the ABC predominantly but also through Fairfax papers. Um, so as a result of that, um, uh, the Inspector General launched the inquiry um, it lasted far longer than um, most people anticipated. In the end, uh, he considered 57 separate cases of alleged misconduct. 57? Um, mm. The inquiry uh, uh, interrogated or interviewed uh, 423 witnesses and involved more than 20,000 documents. So it was quite exhaustive over those four years. Um, and it related to uh, conduct uh, in Afghanistan between the years of 2005 and 2016. Um, the result of the report, uh, which has been in the hands of government for, for, for a few days, possibly longer, um, but was announced finally and released by the um, Army Chief General Angus Campbell today at a press conference in Canberra. And he was visibly shaken, there's no doubt about that, he, even though he had uh, read the report over a number of days himself to immerse himself in the details. But uh, I, I still think it came as uh, quite a shock to have to um, outline the findings of, of the report. Um, so, as I say, 139 recommendations, um, 39 alleged murders of prisoners uh, or civilians, uh, that is to say non-combatants. Um, so one of the things stressed in the report and by General Campbell himself is that um, these killings should not be confused with um, killings in, in the heat of battle. They, they were um, killings, alleged killings of non-combatants, um, in many cases uh, farmers, civilians, um, as, as, as well as uh, prisoners um, uh, taken into custody. Um, so that's a serious number, obviously. Um, uh, from 57 cases investigated, um, uh, the, the, the recommendation was that um, 19 soldiers be uh, prosecuted um, for those 39 cases of, of, of alleged murder. Um, so um, the, the Commonwealth has appointed um, a special prosecutor to, to conduct those cases. Um, they will be investigated by the Australian Federal Police and they, they will be considered by a jury eventually. Um, if the jury's 
find against the alleged perpetrators uh, those soldiers who are both serving and former uh, personnel, most of them from the elite uh, special forces, the um, um, the SAS regiment. Um, if if they are if they are convicted, they'll be convicted of, of the war crime of, of murder. Um, now that hasn't happened since um, Breaking Morant in 1902, uh, celebrated case. Um, one still debated as as, as to whether um, Morant and his co-accused were, were justly condemned. Uh, but it will be the first time since then. Um, so a very serious blot on, on the reputation of the Australian Defence Forces. Uh, uh, General Campbell, as I said, visibly shaken. Um, he described the, um, the episodes as uh, shameful, uh, appalling, uh, and he offered uh, his apologies to uh, the Afghan families um, um, of, of those um, murdered individuals. Um, now, some of these families had made known to authorities previously that, that these murders uh, uh, had taken place. They were investigated uh, in situ, as it were, by um, uh, non-judiciary or, or, or un unofficial um, in investigators. Um, and the um, soldiers, in all cases, were, were, were cleared. Uh, that process has been now considered to be totally unsatisfactory and uh, those soldiers will now be subject to um, more rigorous investigations and, and prosecution. Um, and as I say, it's, it's, it's likely the last three or four years before any convictions occur. Okay, so we've had already four years of this Brereton inquiry and some more years of this. And you mentioned it's, it's war crimes and Aren't these normally judged in international courts? Um, yes, and um, the government has gone to some length to ensure that uh, uh, he's, he's sent the message out loud and clear um, to the normal international courts that would consider these crimes, uh, that they would be considered uh, within Australia according to Australian law. Um, now, I can only presume from that that it is within the province of, of, of a government to be able to, to do that. Um, I don't know if that um, prevents um, international courts from, from also insisting that they are involved, but uh, one, one of the um, uh, underlining responses of the government has been that, that uh, this be uh, considered within Australia by Australian authorities within Australian law. Um, so that's quite interesting. Um, um, uh, I suppose, I mean, I suppose it's bad enough when I mean, the Australian Defence Forces are held in, in, in quite some esteem by the Australian public. Uh, their reputation partly well-founded, partly based on, on mythology going back to, to Gallipoli. Um, I suppose um, it would add to Australia's disquiet if these, if these soldiers were in an international forum of, of justice. Um, so, so far there's been no objection by any overseas authority to, to those investigations taking place in Australia. Um, it's partly why a special prosecutor has been appointed. Uh, presumably that all goes to assuring um, our, our allies that um, these investigations and prosecutions will, will take place um, um, in, in, in a manner that won't, won't, won't cause any, any disturbance to overseas authorities. Indeed. Now, you mentioned earlier an ABC program. How did this thing come out? Because you said also they had been investigated and everything's been, they, the soldiers have been acquitted. That's right. How, how would the ABC come to know about this or the general the, public? The, the ABC came, came to this information in part because there had been leaks from whistleblowers who were disturbed by um, some of the occurrences in Afghanistan. Um, and in some cases, uh, there was leaked footage obtained from 
um, the uh, uh, cameras that, 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 that soldiers wear on, on, on their helmets. And uh, so some of the soldiers who were in proximity to, to these events um, uh, leaked these um, uh, um, films um, to, to the ABC and, and to Fairfax journalists. Um, so some of the, the footage that was aired as a result was, was, was quite confronting. I mean, one infamous scene was um, uh, uh, someone who was clearly a, a, a civilian, a, a young man who was cornered by um, an SAS uh, operative um, who appeared to be unarmed um, and who was subsequently um, shot dead. Um, and most of that was on, um, was, was on film. So that was quite confronting. Um, so in a sense, Australians have been exposed to the to the depth and severity of, of, of these breaches of uh, international norms. Um, and some of the findings by uh, Major General Brereton were um, quite um, quite emphatic and, and quite disturbing. Um, as, as I say, uh, he, he stressed that none of the alleged killings were uh, took place in the heat of battle. Uh, now, obviously, this is an argument that that, that now will take place. Um, uh, what what does occur within the heat of battle? How do you define it? Uh, uh, th th these will be contested, um, obviously. But uh, uh, his findings were that, that these were outside of of, of a combatant situation or, 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 or a battle situation. Um, um, he also stressed that none of the alleged victims were combatants themselves. Um, now, there have been consequences. Um, the second squadron, SAS, has been disbanded as a result. Um, the inquiry found that some of the most uh, egregious um, activities um, did occur by members of the um, um, second uh, um, um, uh, squadron. So irrespective of um, legal findings, uh, their, their behaviour was, was felt to be um, beyond what was considered normal and ethical um, and, and, and acceptable in, in terms of behaviour by Australian Defence Forces overseas. Um, some of the specific findings um, uh, that special forces, and, and this goes to, to I mean, a, a lot of the findings go to the culture of the SAS forces um, that made it possible to create that that environment in, in, in which their actions were, were considered um, acceptable. Um, the special forces, uh, according to Major General Brereton, generally considered themselves to be uh, elite um, to have a sense of entitlement that goes way beyond normal members of, of, of the Defence Forces and as such to be beyond scrutiny um, in terms of their actions um, um, on, on the battlefield. Um, the uh, investigator also found that um, operational reports were falsified. Now, these include oh. both operational reports at the time uh, when these events occurred, um, I mean, whenever there's a um, when, when, when troops go out and encounter enemy forces or, or, or forces from from um, um, local communities, uh, they they have to provide a report as to uh, what occurred. And generally, these these reports were found to have been uh, uh, at, at best misleading and and, and at worst uh, were outright okay. um, deceitful. Um, some of those operational reports were also falsified subsequently. Um, during the investigation, uh, uh, General Brereton found that um, there was a, a culture of secrecy where members of the SAS felt um, that they needed to protect their reputation and the reputation of their comrades and, and, and the reputation of their uh, commanders. Um, and Major General Brereton reports that he encountered a lot of resistance from um, some of the people who, who were interviewed um, uh, who, who simply weren't willing to cooperate um, or falsified uh, uh, their evidence. Um, 
two of the more distressing um, findings uh, of, of the inquiry is um, the practice of um, so-called bloody, whereby junior members of the SAS are encouraged by their um, commanders to to have their first kill, to 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 kill their their their, their first uh, person in 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 in, in that um, uh, theatre of war. Um, so a number of the um, alleged murders that took place were by junior soldiers who were um, commanded by their superiors. Now, very often these superiors were were um, deeply respected, almost deified by by these junior SAS members who felt that. Um, if they um, uh, did not abide by these requests to um, uh, kill someone uh, in these circumstances, that they would be um, possibly overlooked for future promotion or uh, belittled by their comrades. So there was a lot of cultural pressure for these junior soldiers to um, um, uh, commit these, these alleged murders. Um, now, I think in some cases, some of these junior soldiers will be held to account and in others, uh, presumably, uh, it's, it's been recognised that, that, that perhaps either the matter can't be proven or, or that uh, uh, the pressure placed on them was uh, over and above what, what might normally be expected. Um, and the second finding um, was that um, when these uh, civilians and non-prisoners were killed, that um, there was the so-called practice of, of um, uh, throwdowns, whereby uh, these um, allegedly murdered Afghanis would be photographed with uh, weapons or grenades or, or radios, and okay. therefore the justification being that uh, uh, while they were apparently non-combatants, that they were nonetheless uh, passing on information via the radio or did have weapons uh, that, that posed a threat. Um, the inquiry found that um, in, in many of these cases, uh, those items were deliberately placed on the corpses of, 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 of these victims um, to give that, that wrong impression. Um, so that was um, uh, quite disturbing. And overall, the, the, the investigator found a culture of secrecy, fabrication and, and deceit um, but presumably there were enough um, SAS soldiers who felt strongly enough about these events to um, um, to um, reveal what what took place um, on on, um, on on this foreign soil. So clearly enough evidence was gathered um, for these recommendations to be made for um, these 19 soldiers to be held to account. Yes, I saw recently some of the well, one piece of footage from the ABC uh, documentary, and maybe it was the one you were referring to, where the a person was killed who was just lying amongst in the field. Um, the shoulder soldier said, "Should I waste this person?" That's um, right. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. And I also read a letter from the soldiers of the SAS. Um, in the last few days, saying that mm -hmm. this sort of behaviour, if it's found, is not what they're on about. So there's a it, yes, it's, it's shaking the uh, the body to the core, as you're saying. It's uh, yes, it is. we, we, we it shall is. see. Yes, and, and it's I something mean, for... when you when you're thinking of these people as being good, or we are the the good ones, and the others mm. are the bad mm. ones. It undermines. <laughs> Well, it, 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 it does. And, and now some of the issues that uh, were considered by, by the investigator was um, how much of this is down to uh, culture, how much of this is down to um, uh, members of the SAS being asked to um, undertake more overseas deployments than, than is reasonable. I mean, some some of these SAS commandos have had uh, seven, eight, nine war uh, deployments uh, overseas. Now, that can be very taxing on an individual, no matter um, how prepared and trained they, they believe they are. Um, so governments have a responsibility um, 
uh, both in terms of um, defining the missions of, of these soldiers when they go to um, overseas theatres of war. Um, commanders and ADF leadership also have a responsibility. I mean, how reasonable is it that um, uh, these young men are, are sent to these um, terrible places um, many, many times over? Um, and, and so I, I think there will be systemic and institutional issues that will have to be considered uh, as, as well, and, and no doubt they will be. Well, they will be because uh, uh, General Campbell uh, uh, has, has said that there, there will be um, um, inquiries and investigations and, and people appointed specifically to, to undertake uh, these reviews of, of culture. And one of the upshots might be, Antonio, that um, the whole notion of, a, of an elite uh, SAS um, force um, might be abandoned. I mean, it could be that um, uh, it is no longer considered appropriate to have uh, this small group of, of uh, uh, elite soldiers who, who are placed in this position of, of feeling that um, they are above the, the, the normal expectations of, of um, fighting men and women. Um, some overseas, uh, some, some, some nations have, have done that. I, I believe Germany has, has uh, some time ago disbanded uh, its SAS forces um, um, for, for, for those same reasons. Um, um, so it could be that uh, the SAS force in Australia is either disbanded or renamed or, or, or somehow reconstituted to do away with some of this cultural baggage, which has obviously um, had had um, uh, a terrible impact on on um, the attitudes of, of these soldiers who feel that uh, this behaviour was permissible. Yes, yes, indeed. Well, well, let, let's change subject. You might have heard that uh, Adelaide has just gone into a very severe lockdown, and you had one not so severe, perhaps. Uh, in, in Victoria, because you're out in the regional area, can you give yeah. us some tips on how to how to survive? Well, I suppose the uh, I mean, I, what is fortunate for South Australians is that uh, uh, the, the, the worst of the lockdown will be over a six day period, I and mean, yes. it might be extended, uh, and, and it may last in, in in some other fashion beyond the six days. So. Um, I think one piece of immediate advice I can give is that uh, it really isn't necessary to buy all that extra toilet paper. Um, <laughs> it, it's the strangest thing that that becomes the first reaction of people to line up at supermarkets with their super-sized trolleys to, to buy all this toilet paper. But, uh, so I'm not quite sure what the rationale behind that is, but uh, I think most Victorians found that in the end um, they were able to keep up their, their supply of toilet paper by just popping out from the shops. But, uh, um, I, I, I suppose it's it's I mean, one of the interesting things that this year, Antonio, has has been the extent to which, um, while there has been some opposition to um, the lockdown provisions, and by and large people um, abide by by the regulations and, yes. and the advice of, of government, um, um, and that's all you can do in the end. Uh, you just have to sit it out. So um, expressions of solidarity with my friends in South Australia, but. Um, uh, the time will pass, and so will the need for all that toilet paper. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> okay, well, again, thank you very much for taking this call and uh, very interesting conversations um, as per usual. Thanks, Leo. Thank you, Antonio. Always a pleasure. Ciao.